Hi everyone, I'm Benjamin Yang. If you're new to this channel, welcome. If you're not, welcome back. If you're new, I make videos based on my experience as a biology tutor, and I hope that my videos will be able to satisfy your curiosity appetite, whether you're young or old. And with that, let's dive right in. This video is the first part of a two-part series where I focus on simplifying the science behind the biotech company, Precision Biosciences. Not only that, I will also focus on the technology that the company adopts known as Arcus. If you stay till the end of this video, I'll compare it with Beam's base editing technology. In the next video, I'll dissect down how the company tackles the genetic diseases as well as my thoughts about the company based on the science. Before I start the video, I'd like to let you know that I currently do not hold any stocks in this company, but it doesn't mean that I will not do so in the future. And if I do, I'll definitely let you know. Central to the Arcus platform is an enzyme called iCre1. In the next few minutes, I will describe the origins of this enzyme before proceeding to tell you how it works. In the Beam Therapeutics video, I mentioned that bacteria have a defense system against viral invaders in the form of restriction enzymes or CRISPR-Cas. Some people may ask if prokaryotes like bacteria have such DNA modifying enzymes, then do eukaryotes like us have such enzymes as well? The answer of course is yes. Yeasts were first found to have a relative version of the bacterial restriction enzyme. Like the bacteria's version, it has the ability to cut DNA, but the function is completely different. Instead of using the enzyme to degrade viral genetic material, this virus enzyme has the ability to cut specific sites on the genome and cause a repair mechanism to insert its gene into the cut site. This behavior is known as the selfish gene. So, what are selfish genes? These are genes which has the ability to drive their own propagation without known benefits or disadvantage to the organism. One such gene was isolated from a green algae known as iCre1, which is the foundation of the Arcus platform of precision biosciences. This enzyme has an active site that recognizes a specific DNA sequence consisting of 22 nucleotides. Interestingly, this sequence is found inside an intron of an rRNA gene. So, how does it work? A gene sequence in eukaryotic cells comprises of two parts, introns and exons. When it is transcribed to mRNA, the entire gene sequence is transcribed, but a splicing enzyme will cut out the introns and join the exons together. Exon sequences will then be translated into protein. Since the introns are removed, they will never make it to the protein sequences. Imagine to the surprise of scientists when they found genes hiding in the introns. When the iCre1 gene is expressed, the enzyme will look for the 22 nucleotide sequences to cut. Before I continue, green algae are diploid organisms where they inherit one copy from each parent. So let me describe this scenario if one copy of the parent's rRNA gene contain iCre1 gene and let's call it the plus copy and the other do not and we call it the minus copy. In this case, the iCre1 gene when expressed creates the enzyme which recognizes the 22 nucleotides on the minus copy. Since the plus copy has got the iCre1 gene, the 22 nucleotides are separated. The enzyme will only cut when the 22 nucleotides are together. Once cut, this induces a DNA repair mechanism that utilizes the plus copy as a template to repair the minus copy. As a result of the repair, initially there is only one plus copy, but now there are two. So this is how the selfish gene propagates itself. The idea is, what if we can identify a 22 nucleotide sequence unique to a genetic disease gene mutation? And then, we modify the active site of the iCre1 enzyme to recognize this sequence instead. If that is the case, then we have a way to modify the defective gene causing the genetic disease. So, how does the genetic correction occur? 
Unfortunately, we have run out of time for this video and the question is an incredibly complicated one to answer which I'll try to attempt next week. But before we end, I've got a very important point to make which is how does the target recognition sequence of the Arcus technology from Precision Biosciences compare to that of the CRISPR-Cas9 from Beam Therapeutics? The difference between DTIL and Beam is that Beam's technology utilizes a guide RNA in the CRISPR-Cas system, whereas the DTIL technology utilizes amino acids within the active site of the enzyme. The amino acid sequence has to be changed to achieve a 3D structure that is complementary to the 22 nucleotide target sequence. Between these two, the guide RNA is preferable since this utilizes the concept of complementary base pairing and is very precise. A will base pair with T and C to G much like a pair of wooden chopsticks. In the case of DTIL, they are creating a piece of a chopstick with plastic to be the same height and width as the original wooden one. Even though it can be used, there could be weight differences between the two individuals in the pair. Before we end, I would like to say that I spent many, many, many hours working on this video. So could you please send me some blue love using the like button below. And with that, I thank you for staying with me till the end of this video. You've been awesome and I'm Benjamin Young. See you in the next video.